Okay, so now we are into part two. Uh, so anyway, I kept covered the part about the, uh, the horrible, how, how horrible wars are. The next question here is, uh, oh, I explained the reason why I wrote the book. It's to make it known. And another thing too, as I'll probably elaborate on this a bit, I was with the 24th Infantry Regiment, was the, which was the U.S. Army last all-black regiment combat team. team. In fact, I didn't know at the time, but the 24th Infantry Regiment was the last unit of the original Buffalo Soldiers that came into existence in 1869. And it was finally deactivated uh, in October, October the 1st of 1951 during my service. So I actually served with the 24th Infantry Regiment the last year before it was deactivated. So that's a little background on the 24th Infantry Regiment. And they asked me, the next question I see here is, how was the war for you? <laughs> the easy answer I could give was well, not really easy. I would have left the next morning if I had, if I had the chance, if I had uh, my own plane or ship, but I didn't. I was informed that the only way I, the only chance of survival, and this came from my platoon sergeant. He said, you know, you can forget about all that hip hip hooray and fighting to serve in my country and freedom and justice is all. That's going to be another fight for you guys. If you survive this fight, this war, that's going to be another war. Right now, your only chance of surviving is teamwork. Firepower and being alert and keeping up. Because if you fall behind, we won't be able to go back and look for you. So, you know, it's up to you. you know. So anyway, that was some, some of the advice that we replaced this guy. There were six guys that went to our first platoon. And out of the six, there was only three of us that returned. Myself and this brother here, his name was I don't know if I'm allowed to give his name, but I will, because I think he's still living. His name was Maxwell, Matthew, Columbus Matthew, we called him Mac. He lost a leg about three days before he was due to be rotated. Anyway, he's from uh, Arkansas, he was a BAR man, Browning Automatic Weapon. That was his weapon of choice. Mine was the right as an infantryman. So that was, uh, that was one of the most memorable things. Some of the other re re most memorable things was the surveillance. Black villages, whole towns being completely wiped out, burned bodies, babies crawling amongst their dead, looking for their family members. Tanks rolling through villages and we behind the tanks are on the side of the tank. We are on the, uh, the offense. I mean, we are charging into deadly gunfire, trying to dislodge the enemy, whether they were Chinese or North Korea. Mostly, at that time, we were fighting the Chinese people army. They were good fighters. We had many things to our advantage. One of the most important things we had to our advantage was air power and artillery. If it hadn't have been for that, I doubt if I would be sitting here today, you know, recording this story. I mean, they, they, we, we fought during the day. We did our uh, attacking uh, offensive movement during the day hour, daylight hour. They would counterattack at night, 
and usually there'll be something like oh, uh, <clears throat> less than 25 yards before you can even see them. And you don't see them too much. You just fire your weapon at the blast coming from their weapons. There was times when you would see we would have barbed wire brigades, barricades in front of our positions and we'll see the front row running and they're just, they wouldn't have weapons, they'd just fall on the, uh, the barbed wire and the, and the back row would just run over their back. The ones who went into a, a particular engagement without a weapon, they probably didn't have enough weapons to go around. They would pick up the weapons of their fallen comrades and continue the charge. And we had nothing, there was nothing we could do but fight. And just hope they didn't, we didn't, that would be our last fight. It seemed like it was a miracle. It seemed like each engagement, it seemed like they would get so close that you just feel like this is it. And all of a sudden we hear a whistle or a bugle in the distance. And that's all doing. At the time, you know, that's bombs, artillery, and everything just exploding. It's like if someone put you in a barrel and roll you down the a rocky hill, a mountain. You know, the, the noise was so intense. You're popping sweat, and your hands is burning up because of you, you, you're continuously firing your weapon. And men are screaming. And, it's just, it's just the flesh is flying and it's just like a being in a nightmare and you just say, you feel like you, you, you got to wake up. This is, this is not true. This is not for real, but it's for real. It's what, it's what be happening at that particular time. Uh, well, anyway, that was some of the most memorable memories that just one really that was just every day war is so repetitious especially combat every day is the same thing the same thing repeat every night is the same thing we spend the longest period that we spend like 60 days on the front that's 60 days without baths without changing clothes the only thing if you're lucky you may be able to change your socks which can become pretty gritty if you wear the same pair of socks. And we were fighting during the winter months. I remember the temperature dropping something like 35 to 45 below zero. And you stayed there, you couldn't sleep. It was difficult to dig a hole. Your weapons would freeze. If you stopped and tried, if you sleep, that would be your last sleep, so one person we have to watch while the other one try to catch a nap because if you fall asleep, you just you freeze to death. You can hold your hand out, maybe six inches from your face, your face, and or maybe twelve inches, and spit. And by the time it hit the palm of your hand, it would be ice. There'd be ice caked around your nose from your vapor, from your your breath. That's just some of the most memorable saying that you never learn from a war movie. Uh, your fathers or your uncles or your brothers, uh, they, they, they wouldn't, those who have been in war, they just don't talk about those things because we know that you don't want to hear those things. And they're too hard to even relive. Those are some of the memories that combat veterans carry to their grave. I think that's the end of this five minutes, so I'm going to take a brief break and come back and continue. Okay. Ooh,